On September 19, 1991, German hikers Helmut and Erika Simon were enjoying what they thought was a routine trek across the Niederjochferner Glacier. Little did they know that their journey would lead to one of the most significant archaeological finds of the 20th century. During their hike, they came across a partially exposed corpse, initially assuming it to be the remains of a recent mountaineering accident. The body was found at an altitude of 3,200 meters on the border between Austria and Italy. To their astonishment, they later learned that the man they had discovered had lived over five centuries before the Great Pyramids of Egypt were even constructed. What they had discovered would later be known as Utzi the Iceman. This remarkably well-preserved mummy, dating back to between 3359 and 3501 BC, captivated the world. At around 5,000 years old, Utzi became the oldest human mummy ever found. With the aid of advanced DNA technology, we've uncovered secrets from Utzi's frozen body that are reshaping our understanding of history. The sophistication of his tools far surpasses what we believed possible for the Chalcolithic era, challenging our previous assumptions about the capabilities of our ancient ancestors. These groundbreaking findings are set to revolutionize our understanding of human history, offering profound insights that challenge long-held assumptions. What secrets are locked within Utzi's DNA? And how will these revelations transform our perception of our shared past? One of the most astounding discoveries about Utzi is the array of impeccably preserved artifacts found alongside him. These items offer invaluable insights into his daily life, activities, and the advanced technology of his era, providing a vivid glimpse into a world that existed thousands of years ago. The scientific community was stunned by this discovery, as never before had a body from such an ancient period been unearthed with all its gear, tools, and personal belongings intact. Detailed examinations, including precise measurements, x-rays, and advanced dating techniques, have uncovered fascinating details about Utzi's anatomy. It is estimated that Utzi stood about 5 feet 3 inches tall and weighed around 110 pounds. He likely lived to be in his mid-40s, around 45 years old. Studies of pollen, dust grains, and the isotopic composition of his tooth enamel reveal that Utzi spent his early years near present-day Feldtherns in South Tyrol, north of Bolzano, Italy. However, he didn't stay there his entire life. Later on, he moved to valleys about 50 kilometers further north. A CT scan revealed that Utzi's stomach was in an unusual position, having shifted upward to where his lower lung would normally be. The analysis of his stomach contents showed partially digested ibex meat, confirmed through DNA analysis, indicating he had eaten less than two hours before his death. Additionally, wheat grains were found, suggesting his last meal likely included dried fatty meat from a wild goat native to South Tyrol, Italy. When his intestinal contents were further examined, it revealed details of his two preceding meals. One meal included chamois meat, while the other featured red deer meat paired with herb bread. Both meals were accompanied by roots and fruits. The grain in these meals was identified as highly processed einkorn wheat bran, most likely in the form of bread. Utzi was dressed with great care from head to toe, with each piece of clothing designed for survival and comfort in the harsh wilderness. Experts identified the various animals that contributed to the four layers of his waterproof shoes. Bearskin soles, deer hide uppers, cow leather shoelaces, and tree bark socks. His clothing was more than just his footwear. He wore a coat made from different animal hides, expertly stitched together. His outfit included a belt, leggings, and a loincloth, each meticulously crafted from animal fibers. Topping it all off was a bearskin cap secured with a leather chin strap. Utzi was also well prepared for emergencies, carrying a comprehensive medical kit with a dozen different plants known for their healing, disease-fighting, and parasite-eradicating properties. His resourcefulness shone through in his portable fire-making kit, which included a flint flake, pyrite for sparking, and tinder fungus. Additionally, he had two birch bark baskets holding embers wrapped in leaves, serving as an ancient version of a matchbox. For tools, Utsi carried a copper axe with a U-handle. He was well prepared for the challenges and threats of his rugged journey with his bow and arrows. Utsi's teeth were in poor condition, likely due to a diet high in grains and carbohydrates. DNA analysis revealed he was lactose intolerant, indicating that some people of his time could not digest milk. Examination of his lungs showed they were blackened with soot, suggesting he spent considerable time near fires for warmth and cooking. 
it turns out tattoos were already popular 5,000 years ago, as Utsi had a total of 61 tattoos, which can be seen as ancient body art. These tattoos consisted of 19 sets of black lines, ranging from super thin to about the size of a grain of rice, and from tiny to finger length. Some tattoos formed lines running up and down his body, while others made shapes like crosses behind his knee and on his ankle, and lines circling his wrist. Notably, his legs bore 12 sets of lines. The ink was made from fireplace ash or soot, applied by making small cuts or poking tiny holes in the skin, and then rubbing the ink in. Some experts think these tattoos were periodically touched up, as most of them were very dark, suggesting they were regularly refreshed. When scientists examined Utsi's bones, they made some fascinating discoveries about his tattoos. They found signs of wear and tear in areas where he had tattoos, like his lower back and knees, suggesting these tattoos might have been used for pain relief, similar to modern acupuncture or acupressure. This indicates that his tattoos may have served a therapeutic purpose, offering valuable insights into ancient pain management techniques. The cause of Otzi's death remains one of history's most enduring mysteries, giving any modern detective show a run for its money. Initially, it was believed he died from exposure or a fall, but another theory suggests he might have been chosen as a sacrifice. However, the investigation took a dramatic turn upon closer examination. Researchers discovered an arrowhead embedded in his left shoulder, pointing to a violent end. They theorized that he died from blood loss caused by this wound which would be fatal even by today's medical standards. Further investigation revealed that the arrow's shaft had been removed before his death. Close examination of his body uncovered bruises, cuts, and head trauma, indicating he had been in a violent struggle before he died. This revelation sparked a wave of intense scientific investigations, with researchers diving deep into the intricacies of his lineage, health status, dietary habits, and potential geographical origins. In 2012, scientists managed to decode Otzi's entire genetic makeup, like reading a detailed book about his ancestry. By 2023, they had refined this genetic code even further, producing a highly detailed version with minimal modern human contamination. Otzi's Y chromosome DNA placed him in the GLL91 haplogroup, which is linked to present-day South Corsica. Further genetic analysis revealed that Otzi's closest genetic relatives were from Southern Europe, particularly Corsica and Sardinia, suggesting he was part of a significant migration of early farmers from Turkey to Europe thousands of years ago. Scientists examined the DNA of over 3,700 men from Tyrol and found that 19 shared Utsi's ancient family line, indicating a connection to a living population. This discovery is akin to finding long-lost relatives spanning 5,000 years, for years, scientists have utilized ancient DNA to track the migrations of early European populations, including Utzi's ancestors who settled in the Alps. Around 7000 BC, Anatolian farmers journeyed across the Mediterranean, through the Balkans, and up the Danube River into Central Europe, introducing agriculture to the region. As these early Neolithic farmers intermingled with local hunter-gatherers, a genetic blend emerged. By the end of the 4th millennium BC, Many Europeans possess DNA from both groups, a genetic legacy that continues in modern Europeans. Utzi's genetic background is predominantly from these Anatolian farmers, accounting for over 90% of his ancestry. His genome shows the highest percentage of this ancestry among Europeans of his time, suggesting that he was somewhat isolated from his European counterparts, who had more genetic admixture with ancient European hunter-gatherer populations. The Alps served as a formidable natural barrier, and Otzi's genetic profile indicates that his community had limited interaction with populations to the north or west of this mountain range. Moreover, recent studies have confirmed that Otzi has no genetic connection to the nomadic herding groups from the Russian steppe, who migrated westward and contributed to the genetic makeup of European populations. Previous DNA investigations suggesting Otzi had steppe ancestry were likely contaminated by modern DNA, which still carries traces of that ancient connection. Contrary to expectations, Otzi, despite his remarkable status, likely had a rather bare scalp. New findings revealed that he had experienced significant hair loss by the time of his death, possibly even being entirely bald, 
Additionally, Utzi's skin tone was darker than previously believed. It was initially assumed that his skin had darkened due to the mummification process. However, histological examination of his skin revealed a thin layer of brown melanin granules within the stratum basal of the epidermis, supporting the notion of his naturally darker complexion. It's interesting to note that early European inhabitants, between 8,000 and 40,000 years ago, had skin as dark as that of African populations, which aligns with the origins of modern humans. Previously, it was believed that Europeans developed lighter skin relatively quickly. However, this change occurred much later in human history. The genes for lighter skin only became common around 3,000 to 4,000 years ago, when early farmers transitioned to a diet consisting more of plants and less of fish and meat. This dietary shift led to reduced vitamin D intake, which in turn influenced skin color. The genetic analysis of Utzi's genome also revealed predispositions to diabetes and obesity. However, these tendencies were likely mitigated by his active lifestyle and diet, which played a more significant role than his genetic predispositions. He also carried Borrelia burgdorferi, the bacteria associated with Lyme disease, potentially making him the earliest known case. Additionally, he had a genetic inclination toward heart problems, challenging the notion that heart disease is solely a modern ailment. This finding indicates that heart disease is influenced by genetic factors as well as lifestyle. Describing the discovery of Utzi the Iceman as merely groundbreaking hardly does it justice. It challenges our previous notions about the human journey itself. Contemporary perceptions often depict our ancient ancestors, who lived before the rise of cities and civilizations, as lacking sophistication. However, when viewed through the lens of human evolution, civilization appears to have roots nearly as ancient as humanity itself. For instance, Genesis chapter 4 verse 17 references cities in the time of Cain, the son of Adam and Eve. The Bible also indicates that farming, herding, and metalworking, including the use of iron and bronze, were established practices during that era. In direct opposition to the prevailing view of human history, these findings suggest that the foundations of civilization, encompassing activities like farming, herding, and metalworking, stretch back far deeper into our past than previously imagined. Meanwhile, there's another discovery that defies belief, the preserved remains of an 800 million year old woman, known as the Tissel Princess. Be sure to check this out.